everybody. I'm Dr. Stephen Kane. I help people with peripheral neuropathy get out of pain and back to doing the things that they love doing. One of the ways that I help is by providing you with this video educational series that gives you tips to help get you some much needed relief. This particular video is about the five most practical blood tests for most people with peripheral neuropathy. Now this is not a completely exhaustive list of blood tests that can potentially help you out, nor is it enough in and of itself to delineate what exactly is causing your neuropathy. You most certainly need to get a full health history, a proper examination, and sometimes you may also need additional imaging or testing to be done as well. Right, with this said, I picked these five tests because they are applicable to a rather high percentage of people that have peripheral neuropathy. So let's get into it. First, all right, first test is the hemoglobin A1C test. This measures your average blood sugar for three months leading up to when you take the test. This is extremely valuable because elevated blood sugars is the most common cause of peripheral neuropathy in industrialized countries. Hence, it is extremely important for you to know exactly where you fall in terms of your blood sugar levels. Ideally, you want to get them at 5.5 or less. 5.7 to 6.5 is pre-diabetes, which is still enough to cause a peripheral neuropathy. 6.5 and above is full-blown diabetes. So you want to safely be on the front end of that. You want to make sure that you are not diabetic or pre-diabetic and that your nerves are on a day-in, day-out basis at a comfortable level in terms of the blood sugar circulating through them. The second test here is the oral glucose tolerance test. This is where you drink a solution that has 75 grams of sugar in it, and then two hours later, your blood sugar levels are checked to see where they're at. So what this does is check how effectively your body metabolizes sugar after you consume it, which is very important because if it spikes up, up and doesn't come down quick enough, then again, your nerves are gonna be subject to a toxic amount of blood sugar after you eat certain foods that have certain types of carbohydrates in them. Where the A1C is only going to get the average about three months, knowing how well you can manage your blood sugars after eating certain foods is extremely important as well. It's also very important because of the, the sensitivity that this test has. One test showed that in people that had idiopathic neuropathy, one third of them had a positive oral glucose tolerance test where it was not picked up on by the A1C test. So again, very important to know your blood sugar situation, the average three months with the A1C, and how effectively you metabolize it after you eat it with the oral glucose tolerance test. Okay, okay third test here is the methylmalonic acid test. This checks for your B12 levels even better than the standard B12 blood test. Now this is very important because B12 deficiency is the most common vitamin deficiency to cause a neuropathy and there's lots of older individuals that have deficiency of B12. There's also lots of people that take metformin, a particular medication for diabetes, that also have, have a consequential deficiency in vitamin B12. So we've got a lot of people with peripheral neuropathy that are both in their older years and or taking metformin, therefore having the methylmalonic acid test to check for potential B12 deficiency is very, very important to do. Okay. All right, fourth test here is the vitamin D test. This is very important because vitamin D orchestrates your immune system and autoimmune conditions are a very common cause of peripheral neuropathy. Furthermore, research has shown that people who are deficient in vitamin D that also have diabetes are much more likely to go on and develop a painful diabetic peripheral neuropathy. And on the flip side of that, people that have a painful diabetic neuropathy and are deficient in vitamin D, when they supplement with vitamin D, get the levels up, then the pain starts to go down. So most certainly check your vitamin D levels. This is a rather common deficiency that most people have. Fifth and final blood test that I'm recommending in this video is for gluten sensitivity. One study showed that in a group of people with idiopathic peripheral neuropathy, about one-third of them had gluten sensitivity. And so if someone has a gluten sensitivity and they're consuming gluten, this can trigger their own immune system to start attacking the nerves in their body, which can lead to a peripheral neuropathy. So find out if you are gluten sensitive, and if you are, then you most certainly need to avoid eating foods that have gluten moving forward. Okay, once again, these are just five highly relevant 
Blood tests for most people with peripheral neuropathy, by no means a completely exhaustive list of blood tests, nor is it in and of itself enough to delineate the cause. You must get a full health history examination and possibly some additional testing or imaging to know for sure what's causing your neuropathy. All right, everyone, continue to stay relentless in figuring out what's causing your neuropathy. And then once you figure it out, attack it with everything you have in your power. And in time, you will be feeling better. And I can't wait for that to happen for you. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.